moving ahead. Uh, it is it is uh, Monday, August fifteenth, twenty twenty two. We're at seventy nine School Street at the John Public Meeting Room. This is the Moretown Select Board, and we're going to start with um, general public comments. As I've called them in to order. Um, and I don't think we have anyone for general public comment, is there? No one, and there does not appear to be anyone online with that. So we can go ahead and Cheryl Lynn Brown, step on up. And you're here to talk about the town hall at the Ready in River Road Finance. So why don't we go ahead and start with River Road Finance, if you don't mind. Okay. So when we did the grant, the original estimate put in $140,000, and the new estimate has come back at $160,800. It's the contract for pipe was yeah. $160,188, if I remember correctly. Right. right. And so these are the remaining balance that we're going to be short of $48,849. 20% of that. Um, $32,000 would be our match at that one sixty. dollars Right. Um, but there's another 21,000 roughly that we are short because of that 140 to 160, 188. Right. So you have a solution. Well, there's a couple things that you can do. I spoke with Ray about it. Mm -hmm. um, we can use the capital reserve fund and either have a vote to pay it back next year or not pay it back. Um, mm -hmm. Or we can use ARPA funds um, as lost revenue. What about, um, I thought we were looking at additional money from the state. Yes, I have also sent an email to um, our district advisor and asking her if there's any more funds in a reserve fund that she could possibly get to us. Um, I have not heard back from her yet. So once I do, I'll let you know. I just wanted you guys to be aware that. So we're seeking around 21,000 from that particular fund again to cover that difference to the 140 to 160. Uh, but we're still going to have um, at least 32,000 of matching 20% on that road, uh, which is the grant. So we need to decide at a minimum what we're going to do with the 32,000 and perhaps up to 53,000. 48. Or our 48 yeah. part. So 50 to yeah. round it off. Um, and Cheryl has said we could use uh, capital reserve funds. Downside of that would be what? The ARPA funds. No, no, no. Uh, the, the downside, downside of the using... reserve fund. I mean, it's the money's there for you guys to use it. Um, but what? How much we have in there? Unfortunately, I did not pull that up. So I can get home. Do you have a time report? Showing the ninety-two thousand with ninety-two dollars for capital reserve. Well, let's see. Uh, ninety-two thousand. Yeah. Ninety-two thousand, nineteen dollars and thirty-two cents. So, um, typically, we use that for these types of things. Right. Um, capital. This is a capital project. Or. Yeah. Or. Um, I just wanted to, yeah, I did talk to Pike a couple things. Um, um, if we choose, if we want, right now they, are, they could do the job in October. They would, they would do the job next year um, without increasing their price and perhaps the price could go down because of the asphalt uh, price itself might go down. Possibly, but might also go up too, I guess, but Seems like it's going down. So, I mean, it's a, it, an option that we don't, Pike will honor their bid until, if we just agree that they'll do the job, if we want to wait until spring next year to expand our options as far as payment 
What's um, any downside of that with the road? I mean, I know it's going to deteriorate more, but they're tearing the whole thing up when they're. Yes, right. right. So I did talk to Martin about it. Uh, he feels, you know, he doesn't really like the uh, getting it done in late October is not the best. Uh, uh, right. You know, for, you know, doesn't give any time for it to settle down. Uh, you know, the, the, world, the actual sub base conditions, road conditions, they might be less than what we, less desirable than a good, you know, spring, summer. Right? But, uh, it's you know, it's just an option, you know, that yeah. we can do. So you know, I think it's uh, I think it's a good option. To wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, one downside to that would be it's uh, pretty hard on the plow already going over that because it's the terrain. Just some something that's a downside to it. Um, but I also agree with everybody else that we don't want to do it in late October and have a subpar product. Well, we've got to be ripping up the old pavement anyway, right? We will be. So why don't you rip it up in the fall? That may be a possibility. Okay. Taking the pavement up, right grinding it, draining it, and just leaving it. Yeah. I can certainly ask them. Can I just say something, just because I live down that way? That was one of the problems with why we paved it, because in the spring it was impassable. <coughs> right, but we did have a lot of milk trucks coming in at that time. All hours of the night that really uh, tore it up pretty quickly as well. So without that kind of traffic, I think, it's not going to be nearly as bad as before. Yeah, plus I mean, I really, if you, and this is what you've done, people feel that it's better to do something like that in the spring rather than kind of rush it towards the end. I think I'm so. more inclined to go ahead with that. Um, and if there are real bad, that I haven't been out there, I mean, I, I hear there are real bad spots out there. If there's something that needs to be addressed, maybe we can get Pike to address that as far as eating something out. Yeah. So it's not going to kill the equipment. But uh, you know, we've done it this long. We might as well kick that can down the road a little bit. And as long as we, you know, we have something in writing that they are going to hold that price, um, you know, I think yeah. it's fine. All right, Sherilyn, sure. I guess that is just uh, financing on that. Unless, any objections to that, or does everyone agree? Mm -hmm. Don? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And the next thing is the um, North Sidewalk, uh, the Sidewalk Study, um, the grant we just received. Um, we need to have two people selected for the path of ready process to hire the consultant to do the um, study. All right. Is there one over in Gallagher? Gallagher. And Chris Hunt highly recommends. He's the gentleman that we, that I work with closely at the state that we use path of ready, which is the one that we use for um, the current sidewalk here in the village. Mm -hmm. It used to be. Um, any volunteers as far as who would like to be on that? Um, and there are two people, and you would uh, evaluate whoever they have, have at the ready, which is usually two or three firms. Um, and you would do kind of what Ray uh, just recently did, or, or they did with the wastewater project. But it's this firm finds, uh, explain to me just a little bit more again. I, I'm, Sure. So. At the ready, is, it's uh, it's something that the state has a kind of a category that has uh, consulting services that are already been um, uh, vested, I guess, if you have. Um, so vetted, vetted. Yes. Excuse me. Um, so they will uh, provide you with these names and then you know, these consultants that we're choosing choosing to do the um, the study over there. And so it needs two members of the board to. And the study okay. is to see if it can be done. Feasibility study, yes. Yeah, if the width is there and the grade and the thing and the runoff. Right, and the, and the reasons, you know, yeah. the, the traffic, you know. Well, well, that's all certainly use. there. Yeah, no, I think that's... Yeah. Um, oh, but you have to do that step before you can go to the next step. Right, any of the, the grants that you get require a right. feasibility study. And when does that start, like, right away or...? Yeah, you would start working with Chris Hunt. So, yeah. If 
actually, a, I mean, I'm not trying to correct you, it's a scoping study. Scope, yeah. Yeah, it's good. So it would work with Chris on in the selection of an interview. So, so it's a couple of hours. And I can do it as well, a couple hours a week or a month. Or what is yeah, it? probably that. A couple of emails <laughs> or meetings yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So I'll send out an email and let Chris, I'll send you the um, link to go to the um, At The Ready website and then you guys can go from there. Okay. And I'll let Chris know, I'll put Chris on the email so that he's aware of it, the two of you. And then he'll be getting in touch with us. For well, you guys will have to submit. You guys will both have to look at all of the um, the um, member. The consultants. Yeah, you have to look at all the consultants. Um, they have it's, it's like their what are they? What are they Yeah. Well, it tells you about their business and yeah. stuff. So then you guys will then select it from there, and then. Oh, Ray and I would select two out of the right. list. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. You would basically score them. Right. Mm -hmm. Independent. Mm -hmm. yeah. He does the same thing, I think. Does it Chris do the same thing or is it just Chris is involved with everything? Right. Yeah. 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 All right. Good. All right. So Don and Ray. And now we have the um, the town hall. Um Last time we uh, we got together, there was a presentation. I know Don, you were uh, involved in that. We were talking about uh, management of the town hall. Mm -hmm. um, Sherilyn, uh, I know you are instrumental at this point in uh, managing that or taking reservations for that. Um, I know you've had some concerns, and I think you shared it with, with that committee. Um, I did. Yeah. And you were concerned about um, the management in particular being someone, a third party, rather than someone that's occupying the space at this point. Yeah, that's what I told the committee. I didn't feel that it would be very, I feel like it needs to be somebody who's going to be neutral on the town side and on the library side. Not just, you know, not just the town, not just the library. It needs to be somebody who's, because of the issues that we've had and the complaints that we've had come in. So, I mean, I'm, fine doing it until somebody does it, it's not a problem. It's, it's more, you know, but as far as the money collecting, the money collecting would definitely still have to come. Oh yeah, well that's what we, that's right in the document that was created. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, well, I think one of the things we said was that we would give it a try to see, I mean, the problem is that as the programs grow there, and then someone, you know, as it was described, you know, programs are ongoing there and happening. And then someone calls to rent the town hall, which is definitely supposed to, we're doing it, it's supposed to happen. But the benefit of having someone from, at this point, the library and someday be a third person once we renovate it and we get, we have a year, we're a year away from that anyways, because we're going to do the schematic design thing and, you know, get to be ready for town hall meeting to see what people select to have done or not done. Um, and then after that, then assuming we've done some stuff to bring it around to more of a community center, then hopefully the place will be able to then get evolved into a third party manager. Absolutely, you know, who will be like coordinating the, the whole facility, you know. And maybe that person will make us, you know, the, the events going on will enable us to even, you know, that person will get us small part time pay or something. I mean, that's five years from now, who knows, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, we're all learning and growing with this, right, you know, as we go, because it's new. It's a, we're trying to do something more than just have the building be town meeting and rentals for, like, my next birthday party, which I've had birthday parties, there, you know, and we, should, we will continue to do that, but the kitchen will get fixed up and, you know, you know we're going to integrate it with the library, and, well, we already know all this whole spiel. Right. So, um, it's just that right now sometimes, and I'm not really, I'm on the sidelines watching, you know, the, someone call, you know, you, you, someone calls you to rent it, the library has got some program, then there's a little clash of like, you know, okay, well, we got to hurry up and put it all away, and okay, we're going to rent it this day, 
you know, the, the, as the folks said the other night who were working on it, and they did take everybody's input, um, and certainly heard what yours was, Sherilyn, was that it, and again, why we're going to do a trial for six months, is it just was going to make it easier to coordinate those, all the events, you know, like, oh, yeah, we can leave at one, sure, you want to be here at two, on this day we can do that, you know, I mean, there'd be, there'd be a chance to coordinate it, um, you know, as it was happening, right, rather than, Cheryl in, sends an email, the library responds, you know, and it goes back and forth. Sometimes some misunderstandings happen and whatever, you know. But, um, and again, it's just, it's, it's definitely new. But, and just to go back to the design thing, when we get to that thing, we're, it's going to be, it's, it's such, if you remember seeing some of the designs we've had, that the library will be able to fold up and, you know, right now we're having to roll things out of the way, you know, to, to right. have it happen. So, you know, it's going to be much more of a uh, an easy switch over, so to speak. Anyways, so I... I well, we don't need to make a decision thought. on that tonight. Yeah. But we just, I just wanted to hear yeah. Which, uh, yeah, yeah. Today, everyone around the table to hear yeah. uh, Sherilyn's input. Absolutely. No, we... You know, and, um, Is there a calendar for that? Yeah, it's online. Yeah. One, but like everyone can see it. It's, it's yeah. right on the website. Yeah. <clears throat> it's been there for a couple of years. Actually, it's been here. It's been there for probably six years. Well, they can look and see what's. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times people just call up and go, can we rent the hall such and such a day? Yeah, they don't look at it. Right. Well, like we just had a, a request today for someone to have a possible wedding there. If it's raining, it's going to be on a Saturday, which means the library won't be able to be open if it's rented. Um, there's actually another one coming up that we just booked as well, which I sent off. The minute I get them, I send them over to Corey so mm -hmm. she can plan on it. Mm -hmm. So. Do you know what time oh, of the they were going to start? The no. weddings? The weddings usually end up being an all-day thing because they have to set up. Right. And the library's mm -hmm. open, is it 10 to 1? And the chin to yeah. So, are you, you said you only want to rent it if it's raining? Yeah, so it's a backup because the wedding's outside. This is so just, they, this well, is yeah, just. But that makes it difficult to plan, doesn't it? Unless you plan yeah. it in advance now, the library is just not going to be open. And the, and right, they're going to have to, they're going to have to rent the hall. Oh, yeah. They don't want to do that. They yeah. pay for it. They pay for it. Right, and then they, they use it or not. Yeah. 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 No, they all they all pay yeah. for it. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, I just want to be clear. No, it definitely gets paid for. Well, it's all good, you know, because it's the the building being used, and right? you know, with going looking into the future, it's uh, really going to get used. It will be fun. It'll be nice. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Anything else, Sherwin? No. So we're keeping it as it is. I'm still going to be continuing to... Right. I don't think we've made any decisions okay. on that. I think uh, probably at our next meeting, in fact, I'll send everyone. We've had the proposal uh, that we heard the other night um, at our last meeting. Cheryl Lynn had some concerns. Mm -hmm. And we can uh, come back at our next meeting and figure that out and, and move forward with that. Um, Ms. Clark, there's... It's, uh, do you know if he was planning on being online or coming? He didn't let me know. Oh, must be online. He's uh, just going on right now. And that is gone. All right, here he is. Hey, Clark. Hey everybody. Are you ready to go? Oh yeah, yeah. I can't hear you. Nothing still. Let's see. 
Mm-hmm. You're not I'm muted. Um, yeah. If you're on the line, it looks like you're. Otherwise, I see your face, which is probably good for the field. Yeah. You got me now? Clark. And now? Nothing still. Can you even see him? Yeah, I can, he's right here. Uh, up there, you have see the light. Um, and his microphone seems to be working. He's not muted. He's got a big one on the line or something. He's not fishing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, anything yet? Okay, wait, 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 it's up on the wall in the corner so you can, so it's not in the light. I don't think we need to go to the beach today. Oh, yeah. They're comfortable about it. Afterwards. Yeah. Just check these out. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, maybe the clock will come down. We can go with it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Nothing? Nothing yet? Okay, wait a minute. Must be him. I'm sorry, I said that that changed. Yeah. 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 Anything yet? Now? Nothing? Clark, um, Wait. You know, we have um, Mike Brown here, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to him for a moment and come back to you. Um, That's good. Okay. Way, he's got his daughter here, and uh, we'll skip back to you. And we'll get this figure that out. Sign out and come back. All right. Mike, how are you tonight? Good. Why don't you, uh, why don't you roll up to the desk here so we can see you. Um, so I had a call from Mike uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he had expressed 
uh, a willingness or, or wanting to come in and talk to the board about overweight vehicle restrictions during bus hours. Um, so Mike, why don't you go ahead and uh, you know, tell everyone what you do so people will understand a little bit about your knowledge here. Right, so I'm a forester, so I'm a forest management company in Moortown. And so part of the way I make, or part of my business is I facilitate logging for folks on the properties, so such on the third party, between the landowner and the logger. Um, and uh, so we have more time, you can't have overweight trucks on the roads during bus hours, and you know, the rules have been there for a long time, I don't know how long, as long as I've worked in more town, so, you know, eight or 10 years. Um, and our list started thinking about it last year because of COVID, the schools were running two bus routes, right? So normally like all this, right? So then I was like, and I didn't have any jobs in Moortown last year. And, uh, but if that had been in place last year, that'd be like four hours a day that somebody couldn't be on the roads. And then I just started thinking about it more. And as far as I know, it's the only town I've ever worked in that has that rule. There's some other towns that have some weird trucking restrictions and, the only other, like, that's what it's got in Hamilton, New Hampshire. Um, and so I just wanted to start the discussion to see if anyone knew about who was there and, and just start to talk about potentially talking about changing it. I did just call someone I work with and did confirm that. I mean, he's, and I told you, Tom, these are all DOT trucks and they're inspected every year, like your trucks and your trailers, and the drivers have to get their health inspections every year. So. Yeah, sure. John, maybe you know a little bit about yeah, I mean, <laughs> Excuse me. I mean, primarily safety reasons. And historically, um, they've run, they run on the roads anyway. And they don't even have, a lot of them don't even have overload permits in the truck. Um, we've had a lot of trouble with Right, Stefan? Uh, usually it's mostly a bunch of people who see the problems. Yeah, that's from the last one. But still, um, you know, there's a few that abide by the rules, and they, I've seen them waiting, but most of them, I mean, I've passed them during school this hour. So, um, I mean, I mean, so really, I guess it's really just, just the safety reasons. Yeah, I mean, I understand that there's an obvious implication for safety, and that's probably why it was put in place right. forever. But I just think that all the other towns around us don't have it, and I don't know. It just uh, it can be very restrictive if someone's like, I'm going to have a job more time Mountain Road this winter, and it's going to be pretty restrictive if they can't truck on more time Mountain Road at all from whatever, 7 o'clock to whatever time it is, and then from 227 to 315 or something. Right. Um, it's just, it's right in the middle of the day. Right? Usually those guys come early, get loads, come back, and then it's essentially you know, an hour and a half or two hours a day that they're not really doing it today. And yeah, and I kind of said it to Tom, I, uh, so like if someone's building a driveway, right, and then bringing in gravel or something, and over your trucks, no one's probably really going to notice if you're doing it during school bus hours, and maybe you don't even know, but it's if you're in one place, like, so if you're logging somewhere all winter, then it would actually be, you know, the inconvenience would add up, essentially. Right. So, so I understand it's obviously put there for safety, um, and I'm not trying to, you know, I don't want anything unsafe to happen, but none of the other towns that have ever worked in have had that restriction. I'm surprised that the other valley towns don't. It's the only town that I've, at least it's ever been brought to my attention. Uh -huh. So, well, I think that's true. Cool. Uh, I know we used to deal with that when I was at Blue so I think this is the only town that we ever encountered to have that. But what we did, and I don't know if this would work with you or not, but we always have. Uh, Found out when the bus rack in the moment we were on and trying to work with them. So they are, if, if, if the bus is on that road at that time and the truck is even, then, then it's good, you know. You okay. Know, and you don't even call the bus driver and get, you know, their schedule. 
Right. And yeah, well, not exactly when they're going to be on the road and then they take it down. Would prefer that rather than just give you a blanket. But, you know, I, I'm in favor of, of uh, you know, I, I, think, I think they started on the roads a lot narrower than they are right now. I think car roads are wide enough now that with who's, you know, everybody's driving safe like they should be. That a bus can in a log truck or a very truck to meet on the road yeah. safely without, you know, without having an incident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, if the road is slippery or something like that, you shouldn't be on the road. Okay. It would be interesting to know when that that regulation or rule is put in place in more time. It's put back to the So, I mean, it makes sense to me that during my season, we would know roads are posted with weight restrictions. Well, that's completely different. Yeah, that's, yeah, no, 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 yeah, I'm not trying to. No, 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 I yeah, said yeah. that to me seems what makes a lot of sense, right. obviously. But other than that, the other time of the year, I think it would be a uh, problem. As John mentioned, that people, a lot of people ignore it anyways. I think we could work with foresters like yourself, uh -huh. like to get people to work with the bus part and just make sure, all right, the bus is going to, this is a good time, it's 15 minutes right here. Let's try to stay in the truck or off the side of the road at this, this point. Uh, but let's look into it a little bit more and see what we can. Like you said, this is a way to start. Yeah, I just wanted to start the discussion about it. Yeah. Um, find out if there are other things in other towns. Sasha, if you don't mind checking uh, other neighboring towns, based in the ways to look at the other big vlogging towns that have that other one deal. But, you know, we certainly want to work with everyone in Naperville. Where would we find that? Then, like, when it was written? John can remember me, Cheryl, I have an idea. I mean, Cheryl was in the house since And and you went on the Yeah, okay. So before that, then you know. You can look into the minutes, so someone will have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we anyway, lose a lot of that in the flood. I don't know if it's still even happening. Yeah, I think things are coming along. What's so that? Uh, yeah, I think between the way we take care of the roads and yeah. the machinery that these guys are using, it's not in the mom and pop of a log truck anymore. It's expected to be able to, um, you know, so why don't we'll do a little research, Mike, if you want to, you know, check around yourself, see what else okay. other towns are doing, if, you know, uh, talk with Sasha, and you can, you know, try to figure out what to do, figure out what to do. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because like, the only other towns that I know of that have uh, restrictions, Woodstock has a light restriction in the village, but that's because they don't want truck traffic in the village, but for that, you can get a permit. Right, like in say of 75, and then Hanover, New Hampshire was just not on one basis, they do it on, but like they can just restrict the, the, the total hours and number of trucks you can have on the road total. So, I mean, that's totally different. But, um, so, those are the towns that I've worked with that had any other restrictions. Besides the actual like, overweight. Right. Yeah. So, we'll willing to uh, work with you on something. Okay. Right, so sure. okay. Anything else? Hey folks. Mark. I think you got me now, right? I'm just getting sloppy over here. How are we doing now, Clark? Not so good. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Okay, you can still hear me, right? Oh, it's us. 
Anything with the phone? Yeah, I'm using the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, th I think when I'm speaking that the, your, your video goes away, but, but that's fine. Um, so the update is I have a meeting with um, Robert Clark with uh, yeah, Otter I'll Creek on Tuesday so. at 2 o'clock. And um, I also have a, um, I try to contact a couple of people with the state, one of who is on vacation. So I hope to get that person, um, Tom Brown, um, but by the time we have the meeting on Thursday. Um, and I didn't get a chance, Ray, to talk with you, but is there a chance that you could come to that meet? It's a Zoom meeting, or not a Zoom meeting, but a Teams meeting Thursday at 10? So, Clark, we missed except the last 30 seconds of it. <laughs> so, if you could start over. Oh, I got to start over? Yeah, <laughs> we didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything until that last bit. Well, that's nice, but I can't hear you guys. Um, this is so bizarre. Um, so this is really true, right? You you can hear me, but I can't hear you. You can hear you fine. It seems that way. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. So um, I think the best way for me to remedy this is just to come. <laughs> it's just to, I was in another Zoom meeting. That's why I was doing this. Okay, so um, I'm going to hang up. I'll be at the office in a few minutes. Yeah, okay. Go. Okay. Good idea. He's in another meeting. Let me see. Uh, Stefan, so why don't you step, step up here? Oh boy. Stefan, step up. Still, Stefan, step up. Please. So I'm going to start. Uh, per the board, you guys have to get some budget numbers together for for a tanker truck and I've been working hard on it. I've spent the last month and a half building a spec sheet. It's 39 pages long. So I wanted it to be as close to apples as apples as we could get as far as budget numbers go. And I only got two back of the four people I got a hold of. And the the lower of the two is four hundred and sixty six thousand four hundred and ninety nine. 462 what? 466, 466 499. And the higher of the two is 557-186. And when they sent this one, they gave me an estimated if I would be to wait till town meeting day, it would be 625,000. What's the lead time, Stephanie? Two years for both. Both companies were, were two years out on getting the truck. So my my recommendation from what I've uncovered would be somewhere in the middle five hundred thousand dollars to put in for a budget number. I know that that's a, a huge amount of money. Half a million dollars for a. a Tanker truck. And how many, how many gallons is it? 
2,000. 2,000, yeah. How did that sound? Sorry. I mean, you get the numbers and they're real. They, just, they, they are real, I, I printed them out just in case. <laughs> and they're two um, fairly local, one's based out of St. Albans, one's um, based out of Jericho. So it's, and I, those are the only two that even got back to me. One of them called me today and said, it'll be like a month before I can get you a budget number. So that was just, just a little out there for me. And this is all, you know, the, the what's needed in a tanker truck. It's not, you know, this, it's the basic tanker truck type of thing. This is um, the basic tanker truck with the caveat that we, when I discussed it with you, Coke, we discussed having the, the pump installed on it so it could pump its own water and such. Right. And that's what the pump installed on it to pump its own water. It is obviously a four wheel drive. Yes, it is a four wheel drive truck. I, I've already cut down the motor to a smaller size. I've tried to, I've tried to cut all the, the big bells and whistles out already because I know that, right. that it's just, it's a huge number. Hmm. Yeah, it's weird that they'd be off almost 100,000. Well, I will tell you um, from what, I've done a lot of research now. I would call myself a subject matter expert, if you will. Um, one of the brands of trucks is the Cadillac and one of the brands is the Chevrolet. But yeah. So what are the brands? Uh, Pierce and E1 are the two brands. The, the less expensive one is E1 and the more expensive one is Pierce. And both, both are common in Vermont. Um, E1 is the whole fleet of Wakefield, the whole fleet of Waterbury. Um, and Pierce is more like Essex, Stowe, but Danville and things like that as well. I've been, I've been trying to do my research. I probably, I would estimate I have like 70 hours into this, into this project myself. And I will say, I know it's hard to, uh, to swallow, but we've, we've been trying and we've done a lot of diligence trying to, trying to make this work as far as the fire department goes, trying to, I've applied for the AFD grant. And Steve applied for the AFU grant. I actually found some minutes from 310 2014 where we asked for a tank truck. We started the process. And we also asked for a pumper then as well. So stay in touch in a few years. But uh, it's, I know it's hard, but it sounds like it's not going down if we wait longer. And what's it in the last? 10 years, 15 years, or? They, they, they used to last, the life expectancy was 30 years. Oh, okay. Both the manufacturers now are telling me 15 to 20 is the, is the life expectancy before we start having major repairs. Okay, so we talked about using some opera funds, so that would bring it down. Right. And both and both people did say, you know, these are rough budget numbers. They're not necessarily the best price, but they don't know what inflation's gonna do either. It's, it's the way they worded it to me. Um, both the numbers are before the end of the year. Obviously we go up to you know like the, the six twenty five if we wait until town meeting for the peers. I didn't get that from from E1, I wasn't really asking for that that insight, but I'm happy I got a little bit of insight on it. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, do you think we could get uh, financing for a 15 or 20 year period or something like that? Probably. I would think so, yeah. I mean, if, if the truck's life expectancy is 15 to 20 years, right. then why would we? Try to finance it for that long, mm. or maybe you know, maybe ten to fifteen years financing. Obviously, we don't want to go to the the high end of of it. And if we could, you know, for instance, take one hundred and fifty thousand out of ARPA, and that brings that brings it down that much more that we're trying to get a bond on.
So when were you thinking that? I know we had originally talked um, putting it on the November ballot. Yes, today is your very last chance, from what Sherilyn told me, to put it on the November ballot. Right. And I know that's that's another other thing. But I, I certainly, I worry about waiting and caution about waiting, because it doesn't sound like it's going to go down any. It sounds like it's going to continue to go up. And I do know all the manufacturers have been talking. Um, there's new restrictions that the EPA is going to be putting out by 2024, it sounds like. And it's going to bring the cost of the motor on the truck up approximately $40,000. And that's across the board. That's not that's not just you know international or just MAC. That's, that's a, across the board of all, all trucks. Unfunded mandates, as they call those things, right? So, yes. something, something like that, yes. So I just, I, I try to do the best research, research I can yeah. and get get the best, you know, insight I can on it. And I, I won't lie, I'm pretty, pretty tired of of going through all this stuff. But I, you know, I certainly feel like I've done my due diligence to try to get what makes the most. The thing with the two year lead time is that, you know, the longer it goes, the one we have is getting pretty down on the side, right? And yep. And, and, and I don't two know. Years down the road. I found out that apparently in 2014 it had some welding done to it to keep it going until we got an undertaker. I don't even know where that weld is. I don't know if it's still there or not. <laughs> it must be holding. It, exactly. It must be holding together. I just, it's. It's frankly scary to me that to not, you know, go in there one day and will it start, will it not? I mean, we, we've been really diligent about starting them every meeting, you know, moving them around. And how was, how was, you made a remark, you know, see you in a couple of years. How was the rest of the fleet there? It's aging. Um, I've been putting engine one, the one that we got from New York used. I've been picking away at little things that it suddenly won't do. Like right now I'm fighting with getting it to draft water. Um, I've had a technician up there a couple different times, tried a couple of the, the low dollar items. It looks like it's gonna need about $1,500 worth of air work so that it can pull water. Cause it uses air to make the force to pull the water up. And as far as our other engine, our four wheel drive engine, I'm chasing water leaks. I've had two water leaks because it's all a cast iron system, or black iron, excuse me. So it's starting to decay because all the minerals in the, in the river water can that's what we use to, to fill the trucks with. So it's, there's a lot of maintenance coming forward on that, but it's not. It'll be a few years, probably, and I, I will be talking about a pumper truck as well. And I, I don't know how to how to sugarcoat that. There's no no good way to sugarcoat that. So the actual tanker truck wouldn't have a fire when you're using it. You bring it to the site and you pump some water to the pump truck. So it, the one we have now just dumps the water in a bag. Okay. And then the pump truck sucks it out of the bag, okay. which is still an option. But what what's becoming more common in the industry of Vermont firefighting is trying not because when you first get there, there's not a lot of people to to get you know the bag deployed and get everything going. So that tanker truck can theoretically hook right up, throw its water into the engine, and take off to go get water. And then if more people arrive, you can get that that port of tank. Mm -hmm. And also for the fill site, getting the truck filled back up, oftentimes that can be a lengthy process because you have to get the portable pump off the truck, get it down by the river without dying, get it in the water, run the hose up to the truck, and then it only fills it, you know, whatever that little 12 horse motor can do. So it, it makes a lot of sense to get a truck that can pump as well as hold water and dump water. And I think it was better for a lot of the little things that we do in Moortown, i.e., you know, a 
been to a few dumpster fires. Well, if I go 2,000 gallons on that one tank truck, I can pump what I need to out of it to put that fire out, as opposed to having to bring the engine, drop a bag, get the water out of the tanker, and, and get that fire out. So it, it's, it will help as, to be a multi-use. I, I know. Hey, have you ever looked at the, I, I mean, this may sound way out there, but to just get a 2,000 gallon tank and put it on a flatbed truck with a pump would be a lot less than $500,000. It would be, but I have to follow the uh, NFPA regulations. And they're, they have so many regulations. You have to have rollover protection. It has to have an anti-lock braking system. It has to monitor the tires. It has to have a black box. There's so many restrictions to it. And obviously I don't want a truck that just carries water and pumps with it. You know, it's gotta have the, the hose beds for us to be able to have the hose stored in, you know, a place to put the, the portable on for when we do need to use it. So it's, I know, I know it's, yeah. I, I know. And you'll find that the price of, the price of Everything, including the you know just the base truck itself, is astronomically going through the roof as well. It's all part of the fire arriving at a, a fire, and it's all part of the firefighting system, right? The, the truck. Yes. So the the well, NFPA is the National Douglas. Fire Protection Agency, and they or administration, excuse me, and they basically they set up. So that me as a as a fireman in Moortown, Vermont, could theoretically go to FDNY and know that the truck's going to operate the same, know that the gear is going to hold up the same, know that if I put on an air mask, it's going to hold out for 30 minutes of a thousand degree temperatures on it. It's things like that that are required, and we wouldn't even get insured without without meeting all those current requirements. Which is hard, and I know that. Well, we have, we can, we can put it on. We also have the options, uh, I mean, we're, we're seeking permission to go ahead and, and do that. We don't have to, if, if we find, um, that there, there's another option, or or we just decide that as a board, you know what, we can't, we can't do it, we, we can't do it. But I think we should probably go ahead and um, check in with the voters. Um, you know, in between now and then, we're going to be able to look into the finances. Um, we have a half a million in ARPA funds. And in no way saying that we should use all that, <laughs> but there's probably a, a certain amount that should be put towards it using using those funds. Um, um, so I don't, you know, uh, if we want to ask for that amount, or you ask for four hundred and fifty thousand, knowing you're going to be using uh, upwards of a hundred thousand, maybe more from the ARPA funds, um, and that might make it a little bit palatable, more palatable to the voters. Um, what's your one thoughts? Um, <coughs> well, uh, one thought is that, um, is there, since it's two years down the road, I mean, is there any scenario where we could Put a deposit, say, or get one in the works. You know, I don't. You know, maybe that's. I don't know how much they're going to require for the deposit. So maybe I'm talking about in the right. Oh. But just following that line of thought, that we could get something in the books, just to, because to have someone have it on a, just a vote in November, where we're not really having any kind of a meeting or discussion, unless we could make a presentation at Moore Fest or something. You know. Um, I just don't know if we'll, the if the townspeople, unless we'll, we can educate 
folks about it enough, including, you know, we all have to educate ourselves about it as well so we can talk to the community. But in the long run, it's something we need. We have more people moving into the town. I mean, we have people, you know, we all live here. God forbid there's an emergency, you know, we're going to need the, we need the equipment for firefighting, you know. So, um, not that we have, you know, what do we get for attendance at town meeting, 100 people, but, you know, there's a little more Discussion. time. And, you know, people can be made aware, and maybe then it's an article, but uh, I don't know how we can wait till then and still maybe set, figure out a way to, like, okay, we're going to buy September, by October 1st, we're going to figure out how we can make an order. Right, and the uh, problem, the problem with that is um, everything's got to be submitted that we're going to do an article from my understanding, it's now. So it, if we don't do it now, we're basically looking at, by the look of it, you know. No, it's that's what he said. No, more. What, he's, what Don is saying is how, I guess the, the question is, what, what's the process as far as putting a deposit or getting one ordered, if you will? I don't know that because of just getting the, the budget, you know, getting some budget numbers together for it. And what's and I know the lead time is two years, but I don't know as far as if we said, you know, if the voter said yes, we would order the truck then. But I don't know if there is a deposit or if there is how much it is. But it might make sense depending because if it's two years out, will that be enough time to use the ARPA money on that, or should we pay the deposit with the ARPA money? Yeah, that's what I was. Well, again, are, are you going to, uh, I guess we, we just don't know the process as far as, uh, I mean, you've got some budget numbers, but all right, now you want to put this out to bid and get the best price for it from these guys. Um, and what's the, all right, we, we choose someone, but then voters, what if we go with Don's scenario and we, we choose something and then we put it in front of the voters in March? But we have something already in mind. What's if the voters say no? Is there a? Uh, oh, could they, for instance, take the truck and, and sell it to somebody else if we, for some reason, can't? Do right, it? because it's a two oh, because yeah. of this two-year lead time. I, I can't imagine that you couldn't find somebody else that would jump ahead. There you go. That and would that's... jump ahead in line. You know. Right. Um, I don't know a lot about that. Because this way it gives us or more time to figure out how you want to pay for it, but also gets it in there, you know, ordered as soon as possible. Right. I don't know how that works at all. Um, obviously, they're taking a little bit of time to figure that out. I can, you know, call them necessarily right now. Right. Which kind of puts us between a rock and a hard place. Because I, I wasn't aware that it was coming up so soon that. The deadline to get it. I don't think any of us really. Uh, it just kind of all of a sudden came up, and in the conversation, I'm like, "Well, oh, oh crap! I guess I better move more efficiently because I, I spent all the time because I wanted to make sure that what we got was going to be a quote across the board. I'm right. trying to make it apples to apples to the best of my ability." Well, so far we've committed, um, well, no, we haven't totally committed. We've got 100,000 100, committed. That's neck of the woods, the town hall, and the CV fiber. And then there was some talk of maybe 100,000 using that for our in the taxes. I think we could decide that or not. I can't well, wow, so that's four months, right? Yeah, okay. No, so no, okay. And then and then I think the Waterbury uh, ambulance we were gonna just have that as an article right, as a ball four thousand dollars. Yeah. And then we were talking about the tanker truck. I mean, you know, that was but I'm not adding that in. I just I yeah. just, I'm just what we have written down so far. I guess I'm leaning towards uh, an article like four hundred seventy-five thousand 
with financing over 50 years or something like that. You know, to see if that would fly. So if you get that November 2nd, then you need to wait, but you can go ahead. Right. But I can have it set up so that their bids come in basically during that time. During that time. So it could be a decision made then before the, the numbers. So I can lock in the numbers basically. So 475 divided by 50 is 30. Call 32,000 a year. And up until last year, we were paying 15,000 a year for the last five years for our old pumper truck. So that's no longer on the books? No, no it, it came off this last, this year was the first year we didn't have to pay for that truck. So, so you're not on that truck? Though. That's the one that oh, we've, we've been chasing. Right. chasing so you're not here. Uh, I think that we yeah. use any of the ARPA funds at all. Well, I, I think at 475, we're going to have to use some of the ARPA funds. Now, unless we get it right at 466. I mean, if we get the ARPA funds, we can always pay this down, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And it looks like there's, you know, I mean, we can go on a, a lesser number. I mean, we certainly, right now, don't have. Well, I guess things for all the ARPA money. Right. Um, and if you ask for the 475, it, it gives you the opportunity to spend that much, but we don't have to. Right. Rather than chase it the other way around where you're trying to look if you've got a 450, you can say, well, I need to use the ARPA funds, but you can use it here or use it there. Um, going to be eventually asking for a bond vote for the town hall, I would guess. And it's going to be the same deal. It's going to be or even more. Well, except, yeah, we I mean, okay. Grants and grants and such, right? <coughs> yeah. but, and you can still try for a grant for the tanker, too. I won't be able to. Mm -hmm. If you already have it in your town, that's one of the AFG things. If you're already asking for the money from your voters, you can't apply for it, which I didn't know was a thing until no, it's this less, time around. Yeah, so it's too late to do that. So, yeah. I, I did try. I, I applied for it um, twice between applying for the SCBA packs that we were applying for. And I know Steve applied for it twice prior to prior to me being issued. We have tried, but they're just, there's not as much money in there as there. There has been historically, and it's throughout the whole country, so it makes it, you know, very contentious to try, yeah. to, to, try to get that money. We've certainly tried to go that route, you know, several times. It's, and that's a that's a huge process in itself, getting all the, that stuff together and, and putting it in. I guess it does stop charging more for those cool pork sandwiches at Northwest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hundred dollar ear of corn, anybody? <laughs> And I'm not, and that's another thing. I'm, um, I worked a little bit to try to figure out ways that the fire department could could help. But I mean, we certainly can try to, you know, raise some money. But that's it'll be a drop in the bucket, realistically, on that on that large number. Right. And time and times are hard. That's. Well, we need to make a decision here. Um, I think we all need, we, uh, I mean, we, I guess we need to, we've talked about it several years since I've been on the, the, the board. Um, so I think at this point we uh, take Ray's suggestion and ask for 475,000, um, you know, uh, and we can spend less. We may use some ARPA funds, but if we ask that, will be safe um, and we can figure out financing, but really the, the, the town people want to spend 475 on a, on a new fire truck. Basically. If they don't, I mean, 
I mean, if we're going to have a fire department, they need to have the equipment. Right. If you don't, then you need to think about how you're going to do your fire. I, I think most people will be amenable to it. Um, but we need to ask the question. Is that. So, um, is, there, is there some way we could have uh, at Morfest some way of a little thing to educate people about it or something? Or maybe to, I mean, I'd be willing to have a little like something help you with that or to help you with it or set up with our, you know, with our fire department stuff and saying, you know, we're working towards getting a new fire truck, you know, ask a firefighter why or. Well, maybe I'd be could, more willing to interact with people during more fun. Right, maybe we could have a little, 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 little. If you want, I'll bring the old tanker there. Bring the old tanker. Yeah. Out and, yeah. Well, yeah. well, maybe we could help. Uh, or we could find someone who could help us write a little handout. You know, that we could hand out to people so that they here yeah, read about this because we're going to ask you to vote. We're <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I know somebody right. that's already working on that graciously out of her own heart, Sasha. She's been helping me. Kind of work up a pamphlet that we might do as a, a little mailer just to kind of get people oh, out the there. Oh, okay. Well, okay. So we're trying to, you know, working to try to get a, a new truck. And it's really expensive, but it's something that it's not, it's not really, I don't want to word it terribly, but not negotiable. It's something we, we've got to have. We've got to have, right? One of the things that Sasha mentioned to me, um, I thought it was a good idea. I, I hope you're doing it. Now, that was maybe asking some of the other, um, Towns, I know we're signing something with Duxbury tonight, and just like other people have come in and ask us for ARPA funds, maybe you could go to I, their their I place. Have, uh, I have worked with that, and I'm going to be trying to get on their agenda to, to ask them about that very item. It's got to be there's a conflict of interest, so it has to be planned well. It turns out because. What do you mean a conflict? Your mother is on there, right? She's the chair, so. Right, so, <laughs> so, so she's got, she's got a, you know, abstain. She would just because that's. Right. So I, and I am working on trying to, to talk to them and asking, you know, I'm going to, I know they got substantially less ARPA funds than we did. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, thinking like $25,000. But I don't know. They might say yes. The board might say, you know, Screw them! I never see them up on Camel Tom because that's where most of their most well, of their infrastructure. Come up, is. come up with a number and just have a reason for how you came up with that number. Just don't say, "Well, I I don't know how we came up with that." Well, if that's twenty four like thousand because that's the percentage of Duxbury we cover. Right, exactly that type of thing. Yeah. Um, so and you know, let people know that you're doing that as well. The more words you get out there, it's easier to get those things pushed through. Absolutely. Any other discussion on this? So I'll make a motion that we put on the ballot on the Bingham Burris a motion to uh, purchase a um, pumper truck for or I'm sorry, to have a loan of four hundred and seventy five thousand dollars over a fifteen year court period to use in the purchase of a pumper truck. Second. Okay. No, I don't know if I put the years there, right? Just let, let's leave okay. it open so that, you know, maybe it's 15, maybe it's 20, but it's just. Okay. It's a loan. A loan. Okay, yeah. a loan. All right. Can we just amend that or should I have to? No, you can just ask her and amend that. She's fine. Any other further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion, vote aye. 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 All right, very good. I have one other quick thing. Uh, you all got an email today about Capital Fire Mutual Aid. They're working on the infrastructure of the radios, and they've asked before the 29th of August that I get a letter of support for Capital Fire Mutual Aid communication system project. It's to the town of Moortown. The town of Moortown currently utilizes the city of Montpelier and or Barrie to provide emergency dispatch services. Whereas the town of Moortown is aware that a communication need assessment was performed with recommended enhancements to the dispatch capabilities and emergency radio system supporting the capital region. That's um, something that Callie and I went to last year to talk mm -hmm. about 
they realize there's a lot of dead spots, especially in the town, and this would help with that. Um, and we recognize that the ability of the dispatch facilities in Montpelier and Barry could provide better backup service um, and public safety dispatch and communications. Therefore, the town of Moortown expresses their support for the application of the state of Vermont for dispatch and radio system enhancement funding. So basically, it's a letter of support that we support going after funding from the state of Vermont to pay for that. It's something we have to do to put in the application for funding. Sure. But it, I figured I would bring that to you guys. Um, and the way that the, uh, the email I sent with the 10-year the plan, mm -hmm. that's something else they require for you to have a plan to replace it next time. Mm -hmm. And I, they did it based on the call volume and grant list. So that's why our number is not, not the worst on the list, obviously not the best, but I think that that's a great move forward for us. All right, so I'd make a motion to uh, support this letter of support for the Capital Region Communication System Project. Second. Thank you, John. All in favor, vote aye. 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 All right, so that's time too. And I want a new puppy. <laughs> no, I want a Dalmatian for the fire department. Yeah. <laughs> You're the dog catcher. Go find one. Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need this? Um, actually, it, Sasha, you'll need to get a copy of it. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, okay. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Clarky. You can take Tucker. Sorry for the congratulations issues. <laughs> Clark Live. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, apologize. Glad to see everybody. Nice else. to see you, Clark. So, as I was saying, about an hour ago. Yeah. Uh, um, so, uh, the contact with the state, Tom Brown, has been on vacation, so he's due back anytime. And Ray and I spoke about a week or so ago, gave him some dates so that we can sit down and talk with him probably next week. Um, I did hear back from Robert Clark about Otter Creek, and we're going to be at 10 o'clock on Thursday via Teams. And I, can you make that? Um, right now I can, Clark. You, but you that's can. on. That's going to be a, on the internet, right? Or is that going to be right here? It will be on. It will be in. On, it will be online. Yeah. Okay. 10 o'clock in the so morning. So I, I think I can do it. You know, I get some tentative stuff, but okay. I'll I'll send. I'll forward you that. Okay. Yeah, just send me the link. And yeah. And he's got somewhere I can get on it wherever I'm at, I guess. Okay. Um, and I, I'll see if he can record it too so that you know you can see whether you're, you're not able to make it. Um, yeah, they've done this, this this is not the first rate rodeo, of course, so they've done a feasibility study. So I'd like him to just kind of give me a sense of timing, you know, when it starts, what information they need from, from more town. Um, and then Tom Brown, you know, I want to find out from Robert, you know. How much work they're going to be doing with the state in this process as well um, and when so after the meeting with robert with our creek and, and tom with, with the state um, you know i can come back and give another update in terms of what's, what's going on um, you know my you know I, I hope that we can get something you know, get some the, the wheels turning at this point so there's always something on so these are the set we can initiate as soon as possible. Um, there's been one little turnover, not little, but there's been a turnover of staff in the, uh, at the state level. So they have a new person um, that's going to be working with us. Um, Lynette Clendon, Clendon is uh, moved on to another responsibility, and so we have someone else that we're going to be working with along with Tom. Um, you know, this is. It, it, I think it's going to take a while to really get a sense of um, how this is actually going to start rolling out um, because this is relatively new to me. Uh, and but both Otter Creek and the, and the folks from the state have worked on this issue with lots of towns and municipalities over time. So um, I hope I can come back. I don't think it'll be. I don't know if I'll have anything concrete in a couple of weeks, but I think in a month. Um, the, the second meeting in September, you know, I can come back and give people a, 
give you all an update in terms of what's going on. And I think at that point, hopefully, we'll have something really concrete to, to talk about. Um, as an aside, I will mention that Stefan, I forgot about this, but months, months ago, Stefan and I had talked as well, just to make sure that the fire department was aware of this possibility. And so I'll be checking with a few other landowners that I talked with in the meantime. Um, Stefan, do you remember that conversation? We had a conversation about the possibility of a village wastewater facility a, a few months ago, I think. And so anyway, the, the feasibility study um, is going to happen. So just be aware that you might get contacted by uh, some of the monitoring engineering as they go on in terms of, you know, um, th there's a lot of, as we all know, there's lots of funky kind of um, lines going back and forth within the village in terms of both water and wastewater. And so that's one of the things that they'll be uh, investigating as, as this process goes forward. So, um, you know, hearing you all talk about ARPA funding and, um, you know, I don't believe that there's any funding that is going to be necessary from the town initially in terms of any ARPA funding. So, you know, that's something that I don't think will be asking for. Yeah, you mentioned it the last time we yeah. yeah. Uh, and relatedly, uh, we are initiating some conversations um, not related to this feasibility study, but with um, um, talking with business owners in, if you will, the northwest corner of Moortown on Route 2 and Route 100, letting them know that Waterbury has excess capacity that they're interested in using. Uh, and there's the trying to form a group of people that, that are interested in talking with the village uh, with, with Waterbury about this process. Um, it's really, at this point, it's, it really seems wise for Moortown to do this because Waterbury has excess capacity. There's already people in Moortown that are using um, drinking water coming from Waterbury. So it, it just seems like if we can put together a group of people who are interested in talking with Waterbury and seeing um, how this process, you know, in another um, system might be put in place over there. It just seems like a prudent idea to do at this point. Like something for the gallery, right? Or some theater ground? Well, theoretically, I don't think the water, I don't remember offhand if the water from Waterbury goes all the way over to Gallagher Acres or not. It I, does. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, I thought it did. So Gallagher Acres. You're saying for septic, though. I mean, we're for talking about wastewater, yeah. and, and it also goes up to Duxbury, it goes up to uh, Crossing Brook as well as it serves the Duxbury Town Office as well. So it goes, you know, up that right. part way up the hill. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that I don't know, and Stefan, if you know this, um, how far down the wastewater does it go? Does it just serve out of Gallagher Acres? Does it go down Route Two a little ways as well? Are you talking about the, the, talking the about drinking water? water. Oh, oh, drinking water. Yeah. Um, the last hydrant mm -hmm. is just before Sherman Drive. So I'm guessing it ends probably at that hydrant. Okay. Okay. But I'm not. I can't say that 100. percent Okay. Um, you know, the thing. One of the things that we 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 speculate about is that um, it would also not only be a a boom possibly for commercial development, but also for residential development over that way as well. Because um, you know there is increasing development that's happening along the Route Two corridor. Uh, and you know, possibility of maybe extending the lines. Yeah, like no, it's certainly good to have in the back of the hands because you were having a sidewalk study done up to the yeah. Right, so right, right. So you can pull you when you pull the concrete. Yeah, for one. yeah I mean, I, I did know about that. Yeah, yeah we, we should keep that in mind. You know. But, you know, put one in and tear it up and put something else in. Right. <laughs> Things are always getting sold up. I mean, that's just no, no, but you know, it's things good work. It's right, no, I always say if you can have it in mind, but the sidewalks are ways off anyway, so yeah. But with the planning commission working on, you know, the the the, um, the new zoning regulations and, and such are being going to be um, put forth soon, there'll be public meetings, and, and so this is as we kind of move through that process and, and on to the floor, hopefully. And, Town meeting day that we can begin to kind of focus our efforts on you know, wastewater and that sort of thing too. 
there's an outside, very outside possibility that that wastewater and, and drinking water can go on at the same time. I, that's that hasn't been the focus at all of discussion here in the village, um, but you know what, it may come up. So I would be for that. <laughs> you're giving me, me a hybrid system. <laughs> I would, even if I got one high man on the hill, I'd be the happiest person you've ever met. <laughs> then you have to pay for that. I, I would find the money out of my own pocket for the hybrid <laughs> itself. All right, let's do that. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so that's <laughs> on tape there. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. I don't, I don't want to go down any further yeah, right. down the rabbit hole because, you know, at this point, uh, it's, I just want to make sure that you know that we're kind of, we're about to take some concrete steps with the with study for the, for the village. Good. Um, and I hope that we'll have a display to have at more fest as well. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. Very good. Anything else for fire? Yeah. So were they thinking of having a treatment facility here or using the school? It all depends. It depends on what's what's discovered. Initially we you know one engineer makes a sort of off the cuff comment looking originally at the geology of this area that Oh, there's nothing that will work there. But then, you know, there's they didn't know about the system here. And, and from what I've been told, if you build a system like it's up on the on the hill here, you have to have a, a, a similar size replacement um, yeah. site nearby in case that one failed. And and so and that one couldn't have been built if there wasn't a replacement site. So there may be more capacity up here than we think. Or, or there may be more capacity available. Um, and also there are, you know, there is a relatively large gravel deposit right up here um, at the top of Port Town Mountain Road before it branches off the, uh, the two roads. It is privately owned, but it is a relatively good site to, that, that may theoretically work with a great price and great system. Because without the right system and without paying the ship it for treating, then which is expensive. Yeah, I mean, there's there's lots of different, different villages have used different system designs. Some are very passive, and it's mm -hmm. a pump system that basically goes to a really just um, you know, a very large leach steel. Uh, in other cases, there is some minor treatment that they go on, and most of them all take some kind of maintenance. So you don't just, oh, there's a system and you walk away and you, as, a, as a homeowner, you're paying your fees. It, a lot of the, like more, uh, Warren system um, in the village has a, you know, they contract for maintenance on, it, on a regular basis. Oh, yeah. And people pay fees in order to connect to and it. And it's not just that, it's your on-call and return service for when people have a problem that you pay for. Yeah, that's why, <laughs> that's why a system, you know, connecting with Waterbury, it, it theoretically, is, is, is an easier sell than the one here because right. it's just, you know, yeah, I want to, you know, you join the pipes and there you go. You pay your fee and more. And more yeah. right you already it. have the system that can handle The infrastructure's there. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right. The infrastructure. Yeah. So. so. Well, good, Clark. And we appreciate the updates. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Thank sorry for the down. Wishes. I'm glad I was. <laughs> Not sure it's <laughs> us, you, or who, but that's all right. But, uh, Thank thanks you. for paying attention and listening. And, uh, um, So the second meeting in September would be on the 19th, correct? Yes. Okay. Sure. And, okay, yeah, we believe according it. to my calendar. Anyway. Yeah. Um, it would be useful for me um, that if I could come uh, in like around seven, is that too late to come in? No, it's good. On the 19th? Okay, that'd be great. Because I do, I, this other meeting I got, I left today, I, I will have on the 19th. I do want to keep you all posted. So sounds great. Great. Yeah. And Ray, I'll send you the yeah. Because I said ten o'clock on Thursday. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Thanks Clark. Clark. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. No. All right. So that go ahead uh, goes ahead and uh, puts up the reports, communication, communication, communications uh, announcements. Uh, Ray, let's go ahead and start with you. Got anything first? No? Uh, Nothing new. I do have some stuff on the forward business. Okay. I can, yeah. 
Um, Callie, any reports, communication? Mm -hmm. Why can't I say communications tonight? Nothing. Uh, Don? Uh, I always get confused what if to use this time or the other time. But if, a, a report or a communication would be that we're going to have our first kickoff meeting with the uh, with VIA on this Thursday at 9 o'clock. All right. Of the town hall. And other than that, I have no reports or communications. All right. John? I attended the uh, Bridged River meeting and also uh, the meeting on uh, climate change. For the Ridge to River, um, we have discussed getting the road roundtables back up and running. And um, they felt that uh, Moortown could host the first one. So uh, more on that Pro probably, well, probably later in September. Or early October. <clears throat> Is that it? Uh, that was, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I did have some discussion with Jared Cargill from Faston uh, Select Board on the Hydra Theater that he said it's, it's wonderful. And if you've taken a look at their roads and how thick the grass is. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 really yeah, nice. And they, they're not, I don't think they're that, as expensive as we think either. They're expensive. Oh, well, they're not. I don't know. You know they're, in, they're under 10,000. So. That's the type of thing. I mean, again, our, our funds at all have, you know, just keep using those on everything. But, yeah. I mean, that's something that would down the road. I mean, if we can. I just think I've seen those and they work very well. Yeah. And it was the, between labor and. What actually the product you get is mm -hmm. probably worth it. If I see you have the, um, it's great to have thick grass, but at the same point we have to have something that can mow that grass on the side of the road. Just throwing that little that little oh, plug out there. <laughs> that, that's true. That's true. Go back. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, roll I'll, roll I'll roll away. Exactly. Thicker, roll away the dew. Thicker the grass, the better it holds the dirt. Yes. Yeah. Right. No, I am. So, are, they're a really great investment. They just, they, you gotta make sure you clean them out well when you're done. It's, there's a certain amount of ongoing maintenance when you use them, but they are amazing. We've used Facebook and it worked really well for us. All right. Thank you, Stefan. Um, John, thank you. So, the only thing I have for communications, we did get a letter from um, it's the State of Vermont Agency Administration, Office, Office of the Secretary. Um, and they were asking us if we wanted to um, be included in a new state initiative called Ideal Vermont. Um, Ideal Vermont stands for something in service members. Ideal stands for inclusion, diversity, equality, education, uh, action and leadership, pardon me. Um, so I'm gonna have Sasha send you a little bit about this. They're looking for an answer from us uh, by the 12th of September. So at our next meeting, we can uh, discuss this. Uh, but there's a brochure and a little bit about it. And Sasha, if you can get that out to everyone so you can have What's a- What's it called, Ideal? Ideal, I-D-E-A-L. Um, uh, uh, advancing new equity at the local level. Um, and the person, the executive director, um, um, Zuzana Davis, uh, would um, be happy to discuss it with us. So if we want someone to come in and hear a little bit about it, we can, we can do that as well. So, um, so let's go ahead. Um, I'm gonna do old business first. Um, and let's start, start at the top. We have any on the Recovery Act funds that we, I know we've talked a little bit about it tonight. Anything else new? No, we haven't had a meeting. So uh, nothing on legal trails, condensation, we're all still, I know you. Yes. Just back to the trails. Um, I know at some point we're thinking we're going to have a meeting with the um, TRB or no, it was the planning. Both. Yeah, oh, both. 
Yep. Well, I just wanted to throw out there that I thought to take another in that meeting with that those two committees and the select board is maybe some of the having some input from the town road crew at that meeting as well for their knowledge on some of the stuff they're having to do on roads and requests and stuff like that. You know, when when the time comes, something to think of. You know, yep. maybe have them. So with our August, uh, we have an August September collaboration with the Select Board Planning Commission DRB include um, road crew as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm just throwing out there as an idea that, you know, I think there could be some valuable input there, you know, at least in the first session or something, you know, just to get out on the table. Sure. The, I think the, scenarios. the more people we have, um, the better. Um, Legal trails, did you have anything in particular with that? Or? Oh, no, no, it yeah. just made me think of the class four and the trails and the, yeah. you know, all that, you know, all that. Uh, the condensation you've been... Yeah, we have, we're working on it, yeah. I don't have anything to okay, report. Just, it's, it's in the, it's, we're working on it. All right, so um, our next one, we have blinking lights, speed limit, and then sheriff department contract. So I wanted to discuss the sheriff department contract because I misspoke last time. Um, I think Ray asked the question. Uh, which one is it? Uh, here on the top. It actually includes. Um, it's a year contract that goes from July to through the next year. So through through to June. June 30. Right, um, and I think Ray had asked, I said, no, it's just this year. Oh, yeah, so, right, we're going to do just this five. Right, so at, we're actually looking to commit um, next year as well. Um, so, and we put an annual amount on the contract. So it's about this six months, uh, pardon me, it, would, it is going to be a little less, um, six months next year and then you know five months or whatever mm -hmm. i think sasha we figured it out um based on what they had it would be around eighty five hundred dollars for the total for the total year year at this point yeah. uh, we had put 20 in that original so um we're certainly going to be covered for this year and then the budget season we'll need to figure out what uh, what we need to put in for next year as well i just wanted to make sure everyone's still okay with that so go ahead Sign the contract because uh, mm -hmm. it includes next year as well. So it'll be the eighty-five, and then and we have twenty in there for. So it's going to be around for... under four thousand this year. Oh right. So we've got a, quite a bit of money in that. that we've got twenty thousand. Oh yeah, yeah. Because do the, the radar mobile yeah. unit. Yeah. Like yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just more it would affect us next year. I just want to make sure everyone was aware of that, so mm -hmm. that I. So we'll go ahead um, and sign the, the Washington County Sheriff's Department contract and get that out to him. Sasha will be that, um, that lead person. And so we have the quote. Sasha, well, there's something else that we were getting on the, the quotes for the- I think that's got both of them. Um, I think just somebody else's eyes to figure out which one all right, so our next meeting, we'll have a, a recommendation as far as what um, speed check sign that we want to go ahead with. Um, so let's stay tuned for that, but we will do the sheriff's contract. All right, uh, stormwater project, we've heard from well, the clock. in the blinking light realm. So That's moving the RSFS. Yep. Okay. Um, I met with the... With the town road crew of mine yep. and stuff, such. And so we're looking into the, you know, the bracket that we have to get and, you know, yep. the concrete pedestal. And there might be maybe for the concrete pedestal part, maybe that's you want to maybe see someone like Joe also we could maybe have to do just the concrete part and then we can move the thing. And then I've hopefully can catch up with Sasha this week at some point because I've got the rough pencil draft of the permit that we send into the state that I'll go over with Sasha and get it, you know, typed up and we email it to the guy. And then, um, you know, we should be good to go. I mean, then we go into the next phase. 
All right. So, so I mean, still we'll get we'll get the permit, you know, approved, and then we, you know, maybe, maybe Ray and I will form it together, form the thing, you know, all yeah. concrete guys like us. Yeah. Don't form it. Just take a hole. Saw the two. Exactly. That's all you need. <laughs> right. Take a hole and four. Well, we need the bracket, but that's not yeah. a big deal. Uh, so yeah, you do it, get it done before it's no pops. Oh yeah, no, 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 right. So hopefully like the thing in September or something, right? September, October. So that's the story of that. Thank you, John. Uh, we've heard from the stormwater um, project from Clarky tonight. Uh, we heard a uh, town hall management plan. Now, we had our presentation last week. We heard Cheryl Lynn's um concern of having um someone from the the library um run that project or manage that uh, look at your stuff we'll come back we'll discuss that and we'll make uh some decisions on that next time at all um yeah i don't know we'll figure that one out um we will at some point Hopefully it's in September, we're probably going to run into October as far as our collaboration meeting with the select board and the planning commission and DRP. Um, gravel pit, I don't think this is really done. We've got nothing on the gravel pit, right? Uh, well, actually, when we were talking at the, uh, with the road crew, we pulled out the a rough draft of the drawing that got made a year ago and we were starting to talk about some of the right. stuff that could go on and maybe some signage uh, for where people are parking and, and uh, access to, for the fire truck to the pump out spot and stuff like that. So right. it's, Good. It's, uh, it's a little grain of sand rolling along. <laughs> like all this stuff is, it really is. Yeah, you just try to keep the Keep it rolling, so to speak. Dash cams for the kind of equipment? Yeah, I haven't heard anything. Nothing like that. No. Uh, we just, I think the river road, pushing that pavement until next spring is probably a good idea. Uh, just, to, just to be clear, so we have, the, uh, we have their bid here. What I'll do is I'll call them tomorrow and maybe have them revise it just to make sure that it's clear that we do the work next year. It'll be at the same price, other than the actual asphalt price adjustment right. may change, which was part of this contract anyway. Yep. Uh, okay, so I'll talk with them, and then if there's an issue with that, I'll let you know. But if we need to get it signed, uh, I'll let you know. Perfect. Uh, I'm sure that they'll uh, accept the burden. Mm -hmm. And any. Thing I know you and Martin read uh, <coughs> met on the road adoption of Gallagher Acres. Yeah, okay, so I, I got a really good email from Michelle Hampton, who's the district six project manager, and I forwarded it on to you today. <coughs> they have a new book out, this orange book, and it's really it's a handbook for local officials. But, uh, it just came out in March, and uh, it's a very good reading. And, and anyway, she pointed out to me that. Uh, New highways, I just copied a page. New highways and property or easements on existing highways should have a complete and precise survey with permanent monuments and description of permanent filing in the municipal record. So that immediately tells me that for this to happen, they have to do a survey and get it marked out from right away through their, their development. And that in itself might be very expensive for them to do. Yeah. So I, I don't know at this point what what you want to do. Should we write a letter saying that uh, I, I don't know what the select board's next step should be. So we have, I guess, um, between that and other uh, requirements of them to bring it up to this code. Correct. Um, and if we know what those are, we should maybe invite them back or, uh, and say, you know, I guess we should discuss it at first, but if they want to bring it up to code, I would be fine to take the road over. Mm -hmm. um, it's a small, short road we're over there in the development and we could probably, um, frankly, raise their taxes a little bit to pay for whatever uh, 
plowing you would do over there. Right. It's pretty minimal. We're already yeah. plowing there just below. Right. Yeah, yeah, we're doing yeah. two rows below, yeah. and it's brought a lot of money into town. So yeah. I'd like to do that for them, but they just need to meet the requirements. They, they, they have to do that survey, which is going to be the major expense for them, I think. Uh, <clears throat> So, sure. Sasha, why don't, I mean, what does everyone else think? I mean, so I, I, if we invite, um, I, I can't remember what her name either, but invite her back and say, all right, this is the research that we've done. We need to do this, this, and this. And once that's done, we would adopt the road. Is it a new survey or did they have to have like, they look at the most recent survey on file. I believe it'd be a, a new survey because um, it would have. I don't. I, I haven't seen their actual development plans, but the new survey would have to have Jennifer the right of way marked out completely. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I know um, request from the the, the <clears throat> garage was um, placing all the mailboxes in one area. Yes. Um, so that would be one of the, as a town requirement would be, uh, or as a state, you need to bring the road up to this, but as a town, we'd like to see the mailboxes, you know, in one central location because right. the driver said so that's probably the biggest pain right there is doing that. Um, so I probably should put like a step, step by step for them to take a look at. You know, exactly. Here are the rules. Yeah, here's here's what's what you have going to have to do. Yeah. Um, and so, Sasha, if you don't mind working with with Ray on that, and then within the next, probably not the next meeting, because it'll be a little bit of time passing stuff back and forth. We're just getting a clear understanding of what that is, and then we can have them back, or her back, and then present it to her. Um, but that's all right. Does that work for everybody? Sounds good, Ray. All right, how about um, any other new business or any new business at all? Uh, actually, for, for old business, uh, the new crosswalk that Tom and I have been talking about, Ray, did you have a chance to take a look? Who you said next oh, time we're going to judge? Okay, I didn't do that. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, um, but I'm sure, you know, if you guys have looked at it, um, have you looked at it? Well, I guess, I guess we just kind of wanted to, yeah, and yeah, after what I did, what it would cost. Oh, okay. So, so they do a cut. yeah, because as far as, as, as far as I, 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 Don and I can see, is um, we can do it, but it would just. With the, with, well, from our meeting with the state, but I can send you this. You send me that and I will, I will take a look. Yeah. I'll take a look at that. Oh. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, no, no worries. And then also, I, I did forget to mention that the Forest Management Committee next meeting, the next one will be on August 24th. So that's, that's the, I'm sure of that. So you can post that. Yeah, that would be great. Change. <laughs> August 24th. Just another quick old meeting. Sure. Sorry. No, that's good. Um, I brought up that uh, last meeting that the town hall could really use some new. Floor mats, entrance mats. Well, okay. You bring it away, up, you know, <laughs> anyways, you know, it need there's a, a mat inside the door that's probably four by six that's all worn and torn, yeah. you know, yeah. and the, the mat that's on the porch is pretty played out as well. So um, uh, I got an email yesterday from or the other day, you know, one of the people on the committee researched a possible mat. So I don't know how you, should I send that to all of you to look at or something or, you know, I mean, one mat's a uh, hundred and something dollars and the other is 50, I think. I'd have to go back to my email, but um, I don't know. Stefan, what's your... Uh, so we use fully service for our uniforms at the shop. I know that they do offer a carpet and you could do like a, like a once a month, they come in and switch it out with oh, yeah. a carpet. I don't know what the price of that would be, but it might make sense because then it's always going to be a you know a clean carpet. Is that the same thing? Yeah, we did that. Uh, we did that uh, actually at the uh, at uh, Camp yeah, Me. I know the service you're talking about. But what I was thinking that I'm looking at these. Do we do that with these two, Sasha? Yep. Oh, it's a company that comes yeah. in and changes them. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
So could we get a four of what would be for down at the? Yeah, that, that might be perfect. Let's check that out. Yeah. Okay. And find out the sizes that we have. There's an interior and exterior. Or maybe if it's being changed like that, it could just be an interior one or something. I don't know. Yeah, whatever you guys think. I mean, whatever. Yeah. Right. And that's nice if it's changed out. So then. Yeah. You know, keep it out. clean. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, it keeps it cleaner. Yep. Yeah. All right. So is there any other new or old business? Uh, last thing, I was just wondering if um, anything's happened with that uh, McGibbons Road. We got the correspondence on that from Matt uh, Cando. I know where, uh, yeah. Uh, That's the email from Martin a couple of weeks ago, you think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What were we going to do there? Was it Salaki? Was it Salaki? Yeah. Like, oh, that we're going to culvert it. on? Yeah. That yeah. You, well, the yeah. culvert's failing and they want us to do it. Right, yeah. 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 Yes, so it, is Sal it is Salaki. Okay. So I don't know if Martin was waiting to hear something. What? <laughs> 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 it seemed like, it seemed like Martin, stabbed me. Martin was waiting to hear back from us on that. Yes, that was my understanding of what I was waiting to, to hear what your guys said. I can't remember the. Uh, we got the email and we just looked yeah. for a meeting once and then uh, yeah. we got to it. I remember seeing the email. Yeah, he, he, I mean, he wanted to know if. if it's on a class you know, 4B we, road. Yeah, it was class 4B. If, you know, we would do any work or, or if, you know, he could do work or, or whatever. He just wanted some direction. Is it McGibbon or the show here? Yeah. Let's yeah. um, well, it's Oh, okay. Yeah, it was. You know, it's it's a yeah, well, we don't Oh, it is. So there's several culverts on these class class four A's and B's. Salaki is a four A. So there's a culvert up there that needs work, and then McGibbons veers off to the left, and that was the gentleman who wants to do. Um, All right, let's get Martin. We need to speak to him about it so that we can clear. We can't get her plunge to do this. No, right, right, yeah. Right. But thank you, John, for bringing this up. Okay. Maybe we could, um, so let Martin know that we've talked about it, but we need to have a memory refresher that kind of speak with me or right. Um, there was also, I had errors in a mission certificate um, that uh, Sherilyn wanted us to uh, address. And so we have, the first one is David, David Jankerson, and um, what he's doing, uh, he's combining, it must be he bought another piece, uh, and they're combining, which we often do, uh, um, well, that's what they do here in town. Um, so it's a change from 400, uh, 504,000 uh, on lot 5B.01000. Um, and it's being combined with 5B.021000. Uh, and, and that changes from 268,400 to 740,400. And the other one is uh, Mike Brown. Uh, combining two lots, um, 5B.021.000, uh, 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 it's changing from 122,100 to zero on that particular lot. Uh, on the other lot that's being combined with, it's um, changing from 650,300 to 659,400, difference of $9,100. Is there a motion to approve these changes? I just wondered how do how do the prices 
Who determines if the price reduction is that the lister? We don't have listers. Yeah, Member. Right. Member to that. Okay. And then the actual okay. Appraisers. I'll make a motion to approve those changes. Second. All in favor, go aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. We'll sum up on that. Uh, so we have, we have the um, Morristown uh, agreement with the, the Duxbury the Dutch Bay Select Board, uh, seventy, uh, pardon me, seven thousand dollars for the period July first, uh, twenty twenty two, through July fifteenth. Uh, I mean, part of through uh, June 30th, 2023, the one year, uh, and that's 7,000, pretty good. So we'll sign off on that. Uh, what's this with the CD fiber? That's the MOU that they wanted the town to. And this is where we need to, I haven't had a chance to look at this, so I want to make sure, before we sign off on that, I want to take some time to just read it to make sure it's what we had originally agreed upon, which I'm sure it is, but, uh, and then we have a fleet permit for uh, RG paving, and then just. Uh, minutes, I'll make a motion. All right. To approve the minutes of 8-1. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, vote aye. 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 So we'll just sign off on these few things and then we can get out of here. Hard to do paving. It's a day late and the bells are short. They're already done the job. They've been up and down with all their big trucks. She thought it was the middle sex. She did come and bring them check the day that they were there. So she oh, okay. Them. Okay. She okay. Didn't have I was going to say, they, they've come and gone. But <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they. At least they were trying. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> trying before they get caught. <laughs> so this contract with Baxter is uh, two places to sign. Have a good night. Thanks, Thanks, good night. I think that's everything, right? All right, so I move to um, vacate. Close this down. Second. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you.